While at the park one day, a woman sat down next to a man on a bench near a playground. That's my son over there, she said, pointing to a little boy in a red sweater who was gliding down the slide. He's a fine-looking boy, the man said. That's my daughter on the bike in the white dress. Then, looking at his watch, he called to his daughter. What do you say we go, Melissa? Melissa pleaded. Just five more minutes, Dad. Please? Just five more minutes. The man nodded and Melissa continued to ride her bike to her heart's content. Minutes passed and the father stood and called again to his daughter. Time to go now. Again Melissa pleaded. Five more minutes, Dad. Just five more minutes. The man smiled and said, OK, my. You certainly are a patient father. The woman responded. The man smiled and then said, Her older brother Tommy was killed by a drunk driver last year while he was riding his bike near here. I never spent much time with Tommy and now I'd give anything for just five more minutes with him. I vowed not to make the same mistake with Melissa. She thinks she has five more minutes to ride her bike. The truth is, I get five more minutes to watch her play. A student approached a teacher with a question. Why do people often marry someone different from the person they fell in love with? The teacher responded by giving the student an analogy. Go to the wheat field and pick the best wheat you can find. But remember, you can only go through once and can't go back to pick. The student went to the field, saw a big wheat that he liked, but wondered if there was a bigger one further ahead. He kept searching for a bigger one, but eventually realized that he missed the best one in his search for something better. He returned to the teacher empty-handed, regretting his mistake. The teacher explained, this is the same mistake that people make when they fall in love and let go of the best person they could have in their life. When asked if one should never fall in love, the teacher replied, Of course not. Falling in love is natural, but once you do, you should never let go of that person because of anger, ego, or comparisons with others. The student asked, Then how do they end up marrying someone else? The teacher gave another analogy. Go to the cornfield and choose the biggest corn you can find, with the same rule as before. This time, the student was careful and chose a medium-sized corn that he was satisfied with. The teacher explained. This is how one makes a choice for marriage. They look for someone that is just nice, and put their faith in that person being the best they can find. The student was left confused, wondering if it was better to marry someone you love or love someone you marry. The teacher simply replied, It's an easy answer if you're willing to admit it to yourself. Recently Steve had a car accident. So he put his car in the garage to carry out the repair work. Since he had to go to the job daily, he decided that until the car is ready, he will travel by the metro train. One day, he noticed a homeless guy at the train station at night. He felt pity for him, so he gave him some change from his pocket. The homeless guy thanked him for it. Next day again, he noticed the homeless guy at the same place. This time Steve though to get him something to eat, so he went outside the station and brought him a meal. The homeless guy thanked him for his kindness. But Steve got curious and asked him, How did you get to this point? The homeless guy looked up at him and with a smile, he said, By showing love. Steve didn't understand it, so he asked him, What do you mean by that? The homeless guy replied that, Throughout my whole life, I made sure that everyone was happy. No matter what was going right or wrong in my life, I always helped everyone. Steve asked him, Do you regret it? 
To which the homeless man replied, No, it just hurts my soul that the very people I gave the shirt off my back to wouldn't give me a sleeve of that same shirt when I was in need. Son, it is better to build your own house and invite someone in for shelter than to hand them your bricks while you are building yours. Because one day you will turn around and look at the spot where you had planned to build your house. It will be an empty lot. Then you are the one looking for bricks. Steve understood what the homeless guy meant and thanked him for the good advice. Once upon a time, there was a king who had gone to visit neighboring kingdoms. He was gifted a pair of baby macaw parrots by the king of the last kingdom where he was visiting. They were the most beautiful birds he had ever seen. So, upon returning to his kingdom, he called for a bird trainer and asked him to train macaw parrots. The king also arranged a place in the palace garden for the parrots. He often looked at them from his palace window. As time passed, one day the trainer came to the palace and informed the king that though one of the parrots was flying majestically high in the sky, the other one was not moving from its branch since the day it had arrived. Upon hearing this, the king summoned trainer and healers from the nearby kingdoms. They all tried their best, but couldn't make the parrot fly. He even asked his courtiers to try to find a way to make the parrot fly but they all failed. The parrot was not moving from his branch at all. Finally, after trying everything, the king thought that maybe he needs someone who may be more familiar with natural habitat. He asked his courtier to get a farmer from the countryside and take him to the parrot to see if he can understand the problem with the parrot. The next morning, the king was thrilled to see the parrot flying high above the palace gardens. He asked his servant to call that farmer to meet him. With his hands folded with respect, the farmer said to the king, It was very easy, your majesty. I simply cut the branch where the bird was sitting. A long time ago a very cruel king named Bishop was ruling the city of Iron Land. All citizens were fearful because of his cruelty. Bishop has a dog named Jack, which he used to love more than anything. One fateful morning Jack died. Bishop organized last rituals for the dog. Entire city came to a cremation ground. Bishop was very happy to see that people love him so much and he felt he is the most popular king in the world. After few days Bishop died but no one came for his funerals.